KB Toys was once one of the largest toy companies in the world. They held second place to Toys R Us for decades. You'll see how a few key missteps and too many buyouts killed an 87-year-old industry veteran. This episode was voted for by the viewers, the winner out of five different stores. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss your chance to choose the next episode. Thanks for watching and enjoy the show. Brothers Harry and Joseph Kaufman ran a wholesale candy store in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, opened back in 1922 as Kaufman Brothers. They made good business selling candy and soda fountain parts to retailers. They did this for about 20 years before necessity gave them a major revelation. We're now in the 1940s. During World War II, shortages made many vital ingredients hard to get, including sugar, and the brothers started to lose money. This was perfectly timed, however, as one of their clients, who was in debt to them at the time, sold them their company instead of paying the money. Their company was also a wholesaler, specializing in toys. They took the initials of Kaufman Brothers and rebranded this new subsidiary under KB Toy and hobby. Soon, the toy business proved more profitable than the confectionery business. This can be largely attributed to the baby boom. The lush post-war economy also contributed to this. They decided to drop candy altogether and focus on the wholesale of toys. About 10 years later, the Kaufmans opened their first retail toy store in Winstead, Connecticut. Over time, the focus shifted to retail and the company left wholesale by the mid-70s. At the time, they had over 25 retail stores. Becoming a year-round, dedicated toy store meant fierce competition from other toy sellers. Department stores were no strangers to toys, but often lacked a good selection. Discounters like Kmart, Corvettes, and Woolco offered wider and cheaper selections. There were also all toy chains like Toys R Us, Child World, and Lionel Kitty City. At this time, Toys R Us was about the same size as KB, and only a handful of their stores were on the East Coast. KB found themselves in the middle of shopping mall fever. With about 37 new malls opening every year, they decided to capitalize on this. Being a mall-based retailer actually had many benefits, one of which was stronger exposure. If someone went to a child world, which was freestanding, they did so on purpose. By moving their stores into malls, KB could grab mall goers' attention just when they least expected it, and make a customer out of someone who otherwise might have never shopped with them. They would stock a lot of closeouts, that being older toys, sometimes from the last holiday season, which weren't as popular as your average pet rock. They bought these at a discount and put them in front of their stores at reduced prices to entice shoppers. After this, their company exploded. By 1977, KB had 92 stores reaching throughout New England, New York, Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, Michigan, and Wisconsin. They were opening around 40 new stores a year. Of course, KB wasn't the only mall toy store. There were K&K Toys and Circus World, KB's biggest competitor. They were often in the same malls, selling much of the same merchandise. Owned by Rite Aid, the chain would have a rough go of the 80s, giving KB an upper hand. By 1981, they had 234 stores in 41 states. They were one of the biggest and fastest growing toy chains in the country. That year, KB drew the interest of a retail conglomerate, the Melville Corporation. At the time, Melville's retail divisions included names like CVS, Marshalls, Tom McGann, Chess King, and Foxmore. They offered about $64 million to buy out KB, who now had more stores than any other toy company. The two shook on the acquisition that year, remembered as one of the best deals either company ever made. The Kaufmans led KB for the last four decades, but now it was in new hands. Under the family, KB was one big tight-knit family. That and listening to their employees was crucial to their business. Even though this was bound to disappear under a conglomerate, the folks at KB were still optimistic about the future, and rightfully so. With the protection of a new parent 
different, KB planned to open dozens of new stores, and the next 20 years mirrored their massive expansion in the 70s. By 1990, Circus World had just exited a decade riddled with bad luck. With 330 stores, they had little money to fund operations. They finally began to turn that around. Problem was, there was no real difference between them and KB. They carried the same merchandise in similar looking stores in the same malls, all with poor advertising. The owners wanted to sell off the chain, and one of the first people to knock on their door was Melville. They bought out Circus World the same year. The next year, they absorbed K&K's &K 136 stores. KB was fourth in sales that year, behind Toys R Us, Walmart, and Kmart. By the mid-90s, Toys R Us had grown to well over 600 stores in the United States. They saw major success in the 80s, and this carried into the 90s as well. The real key to a successful toy chain was the right management buying the right amount of items at the right time. Toys R Us happened to do this perfectly, while Child World and Lionel did not, both going bankrupt in 1993. KB prevailed to become the second largest toy retailer in the country. It seemed to be a boxing match between them and Toys R Us, the last of the toy giants. But there was a wild card in the mix. KB expanded heavily into strip malls, with a new big box chain called KB Toy Works. These stores were huge compared to their average outlets and offered a lot more closeouts. They then opened KB Toy Outlet, which sold only closeouts. By 1996, they had sales of $1.1 billion and 1,000 stores. The Melville deal had indeed been fruitful, but now their journey was coming to an end. Prices were everything. Whoever could give the biggest cuts got the most people, and this became more important as the next century rolled in. They were also met with intense competition from Walmart, our wild card. They were opening new stores at an insane pace and used their deeply discounted toys as a big draw. Their prices were so low that other chains struggled to match them. As a general merchandise retailer, Walmart used toys more as a promotional tool to lure in more customers, as opposed to toy chains where it accounted for their whole business model. They didn't have the same price control. If a company's prices didn't match, then they simply didn't compete. This price war was too rich for KB. Melville could only go so low. They saw more value in the extreme success of CVS and began to sell off everything else. A corporation by the name of Consolidated Stores bought KB from them. They specialized in lower price chains, including big lots, where they had a lot of closeout experience. They had much smaller overhead and could afford to cut KB's prices as low as needed. However, this caused a focus more on closeouts than popular toys, something which wouldn't fare well. The next battlefront was online retail. eToys.com launched in 97 and ToysRUs.com the next year. Consolidated ended up spending so much money on KBToys.com that they started taking on debt. That, paired with bad sales figures, led them to sell KB. Bain Capital investment firm purchased them in 2000 in a leveraged buyout. No longer a subsidiary, KB was paying off loans from the buyout while also getting kicked to the curb during the holidays, leading them to generate more debt that they simply couldn't pay off. And Bain couldn't have worried less about it, taking home a lot of bonuses for their executives. They filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in 2004. They closed half their stores and fired about a quarter of their employees. The deal with Bain set them off poorly, but in 2005, they left bankruptcy and were bought by another investment firm, Prentice Capital. They wanted to help KB make a company turnaround. The problem was that they were selling almost all closeouts, not any hot products. The Wii was one of the few popular toys that year, and KB didn't stock it. On top of that, mall attendance was dropping significantly. And for a company like KB, this was catastrophic. About 80% of their stores were mall-based. As the Great Recession began, they reinvented themselves as a trendier toy store. But now, in the middle of a recession, most customers didn't have a lot of cash. This would have been the most opportune time to carry closeouts. Talk about bad timing. So customers went elsewhere, and their debts continued to rise. 
Worst of all, they stopped valuing their employees. If anyone knows a company best, it's the people who work there. Listen to the lifers. If everybody thinks an idea is bad, it's probably bad. Christmas 2008, what should have been the most profitable time of the year for KB, instead marked their second Chapter 11 filing. By that point, there were few options for the company. It seemed the best choice was to start liquidating all stores to pay off debts. And that's what they did. After all the closures were completed, Toys R Us effectively bought them out. Since there weren't any stores left, they basically bought only the brand, something they didn't do much with. They were bought out in 2005 by, guess who, Bain Capital. They went down for a similar reason, colossal debt from the buyout. Bain made a fortune killing toy companies, and they just got away with it. If KB's company turnaround happened before Bain, then maybe they could have bounced back with more income to pay off their debt. It's sad because it was a bunch of bad timing that bludgeoned them. Sure, their debt was an issue, but we've seen far worse before, and KB had a lot of brand power. It was mostly industry changes, nothing they were strangers to. They sailed through the 1990 recession, but that was with Melville. In a perfect world, they would have stayed a subsidiary for their entire existence. They needed a parent company to fall back on. I think it was a matter of finding the right company at the right time. If they'd done that, KB's death could have been very much avoided.